Hey everyone, I am here with the Fitbit Versa 2, and hopefully this will stay in focus. Um, and I'm out here uh, in a park, and I just walked one mile on it, and I'm going to be taking a look at uh, how the GPS, um, the accuracy on that, and I am comparing it against the new Garmin VivoActive 4S. Uh, so we got two different watches here, two brand new watches, um, and I wasn't expecting a new uh, VivoActive this year that really wasn't on any of the... Uh, the rumor mills, you know, nobody was talking about a new Vivo Active for 2019, uh, but we definitely have one, and it's really very nice looking. This again, this is the 4S, uh, a little bit the smaller version. I believe this is 40 millimeters, and then there's the larger one, uh, which is either 44 or 45. I can't remember which, but uh, but this obviously is the white one uh, with the gold trim on it. But I know you're here for the Fitbit Versa 2, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, and here it is with its always on display. This is new in uh, for the for the Versa 2. Um, and if I tap on this, oop, press the button here, um, it will go to its main screen, the color screen on it. Um, and now there's only one button on the uh, left side. And then gone are the two buttons on the right, but you do have a, a microphone for um, Alexa. And if you have an Android smartphone, that you can also reply to text messages by voice, which would be really nice. But I have this connected to an iPhone. Um, here it is, the iPhone 10R. That's what I have it connected to. And I'm going to be looking at uh, how it did for the GPS here in just a second. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll kind of go through this and what's a little bit different. Of course, this is a screen that, or a, a clock face that I purchased through Fitbit. Um, well, not, it's not through Fitbit, but a third party. Um, and I downloaded this on here. And I, I like this little motivational because once I get to my 10,000 steps, um, out pops a, a dinosaur. So. Um, as you get closer to the steps, the egg kind of cracks more and more, and you see the little dinosaur peek his head through, <laughs> which I think is kind of motivational. I like these kind of clock faces. Um, but this, you do have, of course, your notifications. That's from my husband. Um, but I do like this up here. Let's see here. Um, you have your quick settings that you can get to now, which is really nice. You get to music. If you have music playing, whether it's Spotify or music that's downloaded to the watch, um, or you can get to just the quick settings itself. Right now I've got always on display uh, turned on. I could turn that off if I want to. Um, and then I have uh, tilt to wake. I could turn that off if I want to. Um, right now I've got it on. Of course I don't really need that with always on display. Um, and then you have your de, um, screen brightness settings. And you have max, dim, normal. I believe this has, I'm pretty sure it has an ambient light sensor on it. I don't know, I have to look that up when I do the full review. Uh, but anyway, it is it is easy to see outdoors. I mean, not as good as the Vivo Active as the Garmin. This uses a transflective display, which um, just gets better and better as uh, you're in brighter sunlight. So what else is new on this? Of course, yes, Spotify. It does have, whoops, there it goes. There's Spotify. But it, it only works as kind of like a remote for Spotify. You can't download uh, playlists to it, which kind of stinks. I wish it had that. Um, yeah, but we'll get more into all of that um, later. Uh, mostly, I just wanted to see if this really addressed the issues that I had with the, the first version of the Versa. You might have seen that video if you've been following me for any time. Um, about a year and a half ago, I did that, and I had so many issues with the Versa. I loved a lot of things about it, but I just had tons of the connectivity issues, syncing, um, staying connected when I was trying to do a GPS uh, activity on it. and. Uh, just trying to sync workouts to the mobile app. I had problems with that. So, so far I haven't had any issues. So, well, let's fire up the app here. Let's see how it syncs. See how quickly it syncs over. I'm going to get my iPhone going here. And right now it's syncing and refreshing. Let's see, it's got the Versa 2 there. Okay. Well, that was pretty quick. Not bad. Much better than... Um, the other one. Let's see. And there's my little hike I just did. And we'll kind of take a look at that. Uh, there it is. And I walked for one mile. Whichever watch got to it one mile first, that's when I stopped. And the Versa got to one mile first. And I believe uh, the Vivo Active 3, I'll have to look at that. We'll look at this too. We'll look and see, um, kind of compare the, the GPS results between the two. But the Versa, or the uh, Vivo Active was just a little bit behind on the Versa. I don't know which one was more accurate, but they were both very close. Um, both for heart rate, but uh, mostly I, for this, I'm just looking at the GPS, the connected GPS. And we'll kind of go in here. 
And there it is. And I took a walk around the park here. There's or the pond, and there's a little sidewalk that goes around here. Yeah, I did a good job, I think. And I walked along the path here, and then I was walking in the trees, seeing if that was going to affect it. No, well, looks pretty good. Doesn't look like I'm going to have any issues with a connected GPS, which is great. And there's my miles. I'm going to go in here. Uh, my average heartbeat, heart rate was uh, 97. Let's see, elevation gain, time and heart rate zones. Yeah, this definitely wasn't a cardi, uh, um, super cardiac event. Well, no, that's not right. <laughs> I don't want a cardiac event. Anyway, it wasn't a high cardio load. Um, and my, it says the peak was 118 beats per minute. So yeah, I'm just out here for a leisurely, leisurely walk this morning. Okay, well, let's take a look at what Garmin says. Okay, I've got so many apps on here. Um, here, okay, here's Garmin Connect. We'll go ahead and go to that. Uh -huh. Okay, no, I don't want that. Uh, no, thanks. Okay, that's just what we did. It. Ask me about Garmin Pay if I wanted to set that up, I believe. Um, and right now, let's see if I can get this to sync. Right now, it's saying it's not connected device not connected for some reason okay well let's go over here hold in on this button and yeah it is doesn't show that it's connected for some reason okay Bluetooth phone off phone on we might learn more about the Fever Active than the uh, Fitbit here okay now it's a, it does say it's connected now so it should be syncing over I don't know why it disconnected. And it is syncing my activity as it goes around this little circle here. Okay, I'll get out of that. Nope, this is the back button. I'm getting used to these two buttons on here. This this added, actually the Vivo Active added another button. Um, it used to just have one button on it, so now it has two. And the Versa used to have three, now it has one. So they keep changing things up on me. And it's still syncing. Of course, the Vivo Active, the Garmin, um, does collect, I don't know if it collects more data, but it's going to show more data. But it is being kind of slow at syncing over. That will work out. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a look more at the Versa, um, or the Versa 2, I should say. What else is new? Got This does have a new uh, display on it. This is an OLED display, and it does, which has kind of like richer colors, kind of deeper blacks, more true black color. Um, and. I think it's a little more responsive. Um, let's go back here. Let's see if there's any lag getting up my. Okay, not too bad. Pretty similar to the to the first version of the uh, Vivo Active as far as that goes, but it, I think it is a little bit more responsive the screen, and I do like this um, that you can get your quick settings. I don't think that's on the first one, um, unless there were some software updates that added that later. Okay, and I do, ha I do still have the first version of that. I guess I could compare. Uh, but here is the back of it. Let me see here. And I don't have the original strap on here. I changed it out. Um, but you can see the back on here. And it's a little more refined. Um, I think it looks a little better than the first one on the back. Uh, of course, you're not going to be looking at the back of the watch too often. But I do like the looks of it. It is very comfortable to wear. Um, and again, this is a third-party strap that I put on here. And I like these kind because I can um, really adjust them really nicely to my wrist okay here we go all right now this one is loaded up let's take a look at the map on this one all right there we go and I got a satellite view here which I can really kind of zoom in and see how it did okay now yeah, kind of had me walking through on top of trees and in the water here a little bit but um, yeah, I did do that. I came up here and threw my piece of litter in a garbage can. That was there, and that's where I spelt where I stopped. That's where I started. Yeah, okay. Not bad, really, considering everything. I wish the uh, Fitbit had a, um, a satellite view of the map so we could compare better. But anyway, this says 0.96 miles uh, for the distance, and let's take a look at the heart rate. Uh, 96 and 116. I think that's very similar to Fitbit. Let me take a look again. We'll go back to Fitbit. All right. 
97 and 118. Okay, yeah, pretty real similar with the heart rate. Um, and then the GPS. This doesn't have a satellite view on it, uh, but it does look like it, it followed me a lot better along that path along the uh, the pond there. So I think this, I think it did a little bit better job. Okay, well anyway, that's good for that. Um, basically, that's what I'm out here to do is just. Uh, see if those connectivity issues have been addressed with the the new version and it looks like it has um, I don't have any issues with it it synced over very quickly um, I don't know what happened with the Fevo Active 4S uh, but it did sync um, I did have to do that little work around there but uh, but anyway this is the new oh my gosh I was gonna call it the Vivo Active 2 <laughs> the Fitbit Versa 2 and I do like the always on display and I did think I really like that um, or that would be something that I would really care about, but I do like having that on. And it does decrease the battery life a little bit, uh, but, but nothing too bad. Um, yeah, you're going to get probably maybe two to three days with that always on display, probably like two days. Um, and with that turned off, probably more close to like three to four day battery life. Just depends how many workouts you do, how many notifications you get, and all that good stuff. But other than that, I do, it is an improvement, and um, there's some things about it that um, I would like to see improved. Um, and I'll, I'll be talking more about that later, uh, but there's nothing major um, wrong with it, really. Um, yeah, Spotify, I like better support for that, be able to download music to it. Um, I would love built-in GPS with this, but it looks like the connected GPS is working just fine. So, it's improved. That's good. <laughs> That's what, the main thing I was wanting to know about this. So, come back later and I will have a full review on this little guy here and so far I'm really happy with it I'm very happy with it so all right oh and then of course I'm gonna have a review on this too the Garmin Vivo Active 4S and I love the looks of this it's a very classy looking watch but uh, anyway there they are both there together happy competing against each other this is a 199 uh, I believe this is like 349 so this is a definitely more expensive one uh, the Garmin is I do like that Fitbit did keep the price down on this which is nice so all right Talk to you later.